of its dumb extras on Saturdays. Handle on the law. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Win Radio Was, and a host of other great talk shows that air throughout the weekend. You can see our full programming schedule by checking us out online at newsknoxcounty.com. Knox County's Talk of the Town is WAOV. The WAOV forecasts now from the Brian Stevens Erie Insurance Weather Center. High of 56 with some gradual clearing today. Mostly clear tonight and cooling off some. Low near 31. Then tomorrow we could see some precipitation and a high expected near 39. Saturday sunny and a high of 32. It's the morning chat with Ed Ballinger. Weekdays at 10 on WAOV. From the 97.7 WAOV studios at 6th and Busserin Streets in downtown Vincennes, it's time now for legal news and views. Now, here's Dave Rolligan and Jeff Cobb with legal news and views. Welcome to legal news and views. I'm Jeff. I'm Dave. And we wish you all, or at least we hope you all, had a happy Halloween, or Halloween, Valentine's Day. Jesus. Medic. Yep. Are you running Biden's campaign while you're in your spare time? No, I'm doing my Joe Biden impersonation. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, Valentine's Dave, Day. Dave and I are live here at the old Memorial House, downtown Vincennes, 6th and Bus Room. And you can join us. Telephone, 812-882-3737. Operator standing by. Hopefully your question is of a legal nature, but... Dave and I are friendly. We'll talk about anything. I don't like word problems in math. <laughs> okay. So avoid word problems in math, but otherwise, 812-882-3737. Sort of a follow-up. Remember the uh, guy who worked uh, for Harvard that was selling body parts? Yes. The judge in Massachusetts has dismissed a bunch of civil claims against Harvard University. By relatives of the uh, descendants who uh, descendants who donated their bodies to the institution's medical school, which were then allegedly stolen and sold by a former board manager. We talked about that. As I recall, he had a photograph. He was a tattooed-looking individual. In a ruling on Monday, um, a graduate of Harvard Law School, who was the judge, granted the university's motion to dismiss 12 cases brought against it that claim it failed to ensure the human remains were properly cared for and maybe, let's say, used for the reason they were donated. Cedric Lodge was charged in June last year over the alleged theft and trafficking of human remains. Between 2018 and early 2023, uh, that's when he was doing his little side business, Lodge was fired on May 6th for the abhorrent bet betrayal of Harvard's trust. Now, Jeff. Yes. Uh, we deal in our job sometimes with, you can do it on your license, uh, donation for organ, or yes. you can put in a will and donate it, uh, your body or usable body parts to science. You don't yeah. really get to say which science or what institution gets it. But isn't there some respondeat superior here Superior here, where the employer let one of their employees abscond with the remains, and yet this Harvard graduate said, oh, "Harvard's not responsible." It's probably a Harvard graduate for the judge. I, th I said that oh. he is. He is a Harvard graduate. Oh, okay. Not that I'm casting aspersions. Well, that's why we have a court of appeals. It just seems to me that uh, you know, if you're failing to supervise your employee. Yeah. That you might be responsible for what said employee does. Yes. That causes harm to third parties, in this case, the relatives and descendants of the deceased. So, well, Mr. Rolligan, you make an excellent argument. Well, <laughs> you didn't go to Harvard, did you? No. There, there'll be more on that, I'm sure. Uh, I like to start with follow ups, and uh, Jeffrey Epstein gives us more and more follow ups. The latest uh, involves victims, and by that I mean the underage women upon whom Epstein preyed. There's believed to be well over 100 of them. 
They previously, uh, not all of them, but most of them, shared in a $500 million settlement that was set up by the estate and funded by uh, J.P. Morgan and Chase and Deutsche Bank. Uh, the, uh, there's now 12 of these victims who are suing the FBI. Now that is an uphill battle, folks, but uh, what they're saying in the lawsuit, and by the way, they filed it using uh, Jane Doe pseudonyms to, to keep their identity secret, but the 12 of them are saying that as early as 1996, the FBI received credible information that Epstein was trafficking in young women and girls, yet it failed to interview the victims or share what it knew with federal and local law enforcement. Uh, keep in mind uh, that uh, the FBI did begin a probe in 2006, but ended it 2008 when Epstein pled guilty to a Florida state charge called prostitution and kept ignoring uh, later tips until the final July 2019 arrest. Epstein committed suicide two months after he was arrested. Or so you say. Yeah, uh, well, uh, it'll be, I'm sure, something that there'll be follow-up on. Um, the... Uh, the part of the lawsuit alleges that in 2023, the Senate Judiciary Committee had a hearing where FBI Director Christopher Ray, Ray W R A Y, was asked why the FBI didn't do more. And he promised to get with his team and figure out if there's more information we can provide. <laughs> so there might be a story here. But what you have in any type of law enforcement, FBI included, is discretion. Um, you don't get sued if you don't pursue every crime, but... That happens with traffic tickets a lot. But, uh, you know, five people passed me. Why did you stop me for speeding? And the usual response is, you're the only one I could catch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is going to result in a lawsuit, but this lady, uh, who may be a tad entitled, is upset with Starbucks because she could not get her... Um, Order served uh, at the drive through window because she was uh, riding a horse. Oh. And uh, they said uh, we can't. She was uh, up too high? Well, she may have been high, but at a lot of drive up places won't serve pedestrians or other vehicles because there's a hazard and dangerous. And this poor kid at Starbucks in the video is trying to explain to her that you can, you know, park your horse, come in, we'll be happy to take care of you. But um, hopefully that uh, the horse was uh, potty trained, so that might impact your drive through as well. NBA All-Star Weekend in Indianapolis, Saturday. And this story fits right in there. Somewhat of a celebrity of in, the, in the news or entertainment and the law. Um, apparently, before a game began in Phoenix, uh, Isaiah Stewart, number 28 of the Detroit Pistons, ran across Drew Eumbach, number 14 of the Suns. Uh, I think they're both centers, in other words, big men in basketball talk. Uh, it says they exchange word, and uh, Isaiah Stewart sucker punched Drew Eubanks. According to Eubanks, totally unprovoked. Uh, Isaiah, that got Isaiah Stewart arrested and charged in Phoenix. I'm sure there'll be more on that later. It's like also an intentional foul? Yes, <laughs> except there wasn't a game going on. Uh, we'll take our first break. Here on Legal News and Views, 97.3 and .7 FM, 1450 AM. You can join us, 812-882-3737. And we'll be back after these messages. Advertising on radio offers several advantages to make it a valuable marketing channel for businesses. Number one, a wide reach. Radio has a broad reach, reaching millions of listeners across different demographics and geographic areas. Targeted audience. Radio stations often cater to specific demographics or target markets. It's cost-effective. 
Radio advertising can be more cost effective compared to other traditional media channels like television. This makes it a viable option for businesses with smaller advertising budgets. Frequency and repetition. Radio allows for frequent and repetitive exposure to your message, immediacy, and localism. Radio provides real-time information and local content, making it a popular choice for immediate promotions and local advertising. Flexibility and creativity. Radio ads offer flexibility in terms of ad duration and format. This flexibility allows for creative storytelling, engaging jingles, or even celebrity endorsements, depending on the objective and budget of the campaign. Mobile and on-the-go audiences. Radio is a mobile medium, often consumed while people are commuting, driving, or engaging in other activities. This means your message can reach a captive audience during key moments when they're receptive to hearing about products, services, and promotions. And lastly, emotional connection. Radio has the ability to create an emotional connection with listeners through voice, sound effects, and music. Well-crafted radio ads can evoke emotions and capture attention, enabling advertisers to establish a deep connection with their target audience. To learn more about advertising with TOC Direct Media, visit OriginalCompany.com. And we're back to Evening News and Views. I'm Jeff. I'm Dave. You can join us, 812-882-3737. Here's a story. Yes? I only selected it because I liked the headline. And sometimes the headline will lead you astray, but not well, well, run it by me. I slept with my half-sibling. Ah, half-sibling. Apparently, yes. Uh, Victoria Hill never quite understood uh, how she could be so different from her father in looks and temperament. She often can, uh, joked around that uh, she must have been the mailman's child. It came by... Uh, the problem. The postman rings twice. Exactly. Usually the milkman. Okay. Worried about health issues, so she sent her DNA to 23andMe, which a lot of people do. <coughs> and uh, unknowns to her, she uh, found out that uh, right now uh, she's uh, up to 22 siblings. She had no idea about. <laughs> oh, what? Some of them reached out to her, and uh, apparently. Uh, Hill's biological father was not the man she grew up with, but a fertility doctor. Oh, yes. Who used his own sperm to impregnate uh, her mother, and apparently he did that a lot. Um, and that's bad enough news, but uh, when Hill found out that one of her newly discovered uh, half-brothers had been a, her high school sweetheart, and she easily could have married this young man, only to find out through this genetic testing that it was her brother. Yeah, a uh, half-brother. <laughs> well, that's still too much brother. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, I, I can't, can't remember what's happened to this uh, doctor. Uh, the, uh, the ancient pharaohs of Egypt uh, intermarried quite frequently with their siblings. So I'm not sure. Um, apparently, if you're a fertility doctor, you're su not supposed to do that. Marvin Yasmin admitted using his own sperm to inseminate about half a dozen patients who were unaware that he was the donor. One of them filed a complaint to the State Board of Medical License when her daughter, who was born in 1976, learned that this doctor was her likely uh, father. Uh, absent the uh, readily accessible DNA testing, he would have never been found out. Um, never, probably you're right. Um, that reminds me, I, I'm trying to think if it's Greenland or Iceland, which is a small, uh, Iceland being a small island. It's dark a lot, and drinking is a huge but, problem. Uh, my, my daughter's been there, so it's a beautiful country, land of fire and ice, but uh, they all, most all, descended from the same group of Vikings that settled it. And uh, so they have this government-sponsored registry to make sure you don't marry somebody too genetically close to yourself uh, because uh, they all came from basically the same DNA. As did we, if you were believing as a Adam and Eve uh, story. Well, according to those who do DNA mitro, mitro, oh golly, con, con
mitochondrial. Mitochondrial. Uh, it, yeah, all, it. it all goes back to one woman. Yeah. Chicago. Yes. I think I said last week that the, uh, I think it was the city of Chicago or the mayor uh, asked for a, a ceasefire with the Israeli uh, Palestinian problem. And they said, fine, uh, maybe we should have a ceasefire in Chicago first before you give us <laughs> advice. Uh, but Chicago will not, they have a new mayor, which when he was running, I thought he was kind of uh, a loose cannon, um, some of his policies. Yes. And some of the things he promised, he found out when he was in charge, were not practical. But Chicago will not renew its shot spotter contract, which is how they determine where gunshots happen. Because oh. the militaries use that to try to figure out uh, where incoming rounds may be coming from, and it will pinpoint the location. Um, and apparently that's controversial. It relies on artificial intelligence and a network of microphones to identify uh, gunshots. It's criticized because they claim it's inaccurate and racial bias and law enforcement misuse. I don't know how listening for gunshots has racial bias, but apparently it does because guess where they put the most microphones? That's where they have the most shootings. So, and that's where they put the most police because that's where the crime is. And so they say, well, you're putting those in, yeah. in the minority neighborhoods and you're a racist. No, that's yeah. apparently where a lot of gunshots happen. And it's called good policing. Uh, and and you, know, the, you don't need the police... Uh, you know, hanging out in the safest part of town and even in the roughest part of town. So as you might imagine, the police are not happy with that decision. A long time ago, Giuliani was mayor of New York City. He had been the district attorney, and, and when he became mayor, he had a chief of police who espoused the theory of what it was called broken windows. In other words, you put police where there's... Yes, I've heard of that. ...where vandalism. Yeah, right, yes. And... Uh, and by all statistics, he cut crime in New York City dramatically. And uh, even though he was Republican, they, they loved him in New York City because they, he got the, the homeless off the street, he got the crime under control. And, uh, Cleaned they, up Times Square? They used to have uh, these people who would wipe, clean your windshields at stoplights and then kind of damage your car if you didn't pay them for cleaning your windshield, even though you didn't need your windshield clean. So it's, uh, it's now racist to be that way, uh, and they're suffering the consequences. Uh, North Dakota, uh, this is kind of a follow-up. We did this story a long time ago. Uh, had the, the pipeline the, called the Dakota Access Pipeline, uh, which uh, Indians uh, fought against. Uh, uh, it was bringing... Canadian crude down to refineries in the United States, I think down around the Gulf. Um, and it just had this patch through North Dakota that had to be put in. And it, they got all the permits, they got all of the studies done, uh, and uh, they started to finally finish it uh, when protesters basically uh, took over uh, the site of the um, pipeline. The federal government at that time, Barack Obama, did nothing. Uh, North, uh, North Dakota had to pay over $38 million in damages and uh, expenses related to getting the pipeline finally built and controlling the protesters. This now leads to uh, the, one of the largest trials you'll ever hear of that starts Thursday called North Dakota versus United States. And North Dakota, under the Federal Torts Claim Act, is asking for the United States to pay it back for all of its damages related to the federal government's failure to do anything to try and control the protesters. I uh, remember, did we talk about the January 25th theft of the Jackie Robinson statue from the ballpark in Wichita, Kansas. That they saw it off at the ankle. They did. I always assumed it was probably just to melt it down and sell it for scrap. Ricky Alverte, 45, has been charged with felony theft and making false information. Police said detectives conducted 100 interviews while investigating the theft to find out who did it and why. Uh, the 
nonprofit organization called League 42 put up the bronze statue of Jackie Robinson back in 2021. They initially thought it was uh, one of only four of the famed ath athlete in the nation was uh, stolen and vandalized as a hate crime or racially motivated. However, police said in a statement, the investigation has not revealed any evidence that it was a hate motivated crime and police said the theft was motivated by the typical desire of scrapping common metal. Uh, they can steal bronze. It has a good bronze and copper and other metals to resell in scrap yards. Um, there at the uh, George Rogers uh, Clark uh, Park, there was uh, somebody who was stealing the brass plates off the lights. Uh, they were in, put in in the 30s, and it was actual brass and just had a few screws, and they were taking those mm. you know, three by six or four by six panels and just left all the wiring exposed so they could sell them. Um, and somebody uh, figured out a way to replace them, at least temporarily. He would uh, he 3D printed exact duplicates made out of you know, plastic material that he could print. So oh. at least they're covered up for now. Well, it could be a disappointment. Plastic. No, I've never spent a moment of my time looking at those lights. Either they're on or they're off. 59-year-old Jonathan Mock. Uh, drove to the San Bernardino, California Walmart to run errands. According to witnesses, uh, it appears that he, uh, not knowing about it, backed into a car driven by Sean T. Norton, age 37. And according to uh, the police, left a scratch, not a dent, just a scratch on her car. Jonathan Mock got out of his car and, according to witnesses, was apologizing for having backed into Shantice Norton's car. Shantice Norton shot him dead. I don't teach him. She's now being held for murder, but my God, what's going on around here? Well, that's like the... Uh Three people who decided to settle their dispute with guns at the uh, yeah. celebration parade for Kansas City Chiefs. So it wasn't what you would call a mass shooting. It was bad lot, shots. There's a lot of collateral damage. Yeah, you know, 22, one dead, several yeah. injured. But what were they shooting? Each other. Oh, what type of weapon? The ones with large magazines was my guess. Uh -huh. They only had three shooters, and uh, in a crowd like that. Uh, one bullet could yeah. strike several people. Yes, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, another airport story. Alerted by a sniffer dog, airport security in uh, Boston Logan Airport found something odd in the luggage, and what they found was mummified monkeys. A man returning from a visit from the Democratic Republic of Congo claimed that he was bringing in dried fish. The dead, desiccated bodies of four monkeys were revealed. He said he brought them in for his own consumption. According to the customs spokesman, raw or minimally processed meat from wild animals uh, is banned in the U.S. because of the threat of disease. Um, it shouldn't be smuggling those, uh, but a monkey, uh, unless he's going to have monkey jerky, I don't think those were edible. And so I'm not sure what's... Uh, going to happen to him. Uh, they say there was about nine pounds of bush meat, but I don't know if it's uh, mummified monkeys were for eating. So don't try to smuggle dead monkeys into the airport. Well, in, in my opinion, these would fall into the least competent category, but what we're really talking about is an organization that is probably on the same list that I have for PETA, which is what are these people thinking of? And that's climate activists. And I, I'm afraid I don't have the name of the group they say they're with. But just yesterday, two young men go to the National Archives and uh, they have pink powder. Not sure what it is, but they spread it all over the case of the United States Constitution. Uh, now, the Constitution is not heard at all. If, you have, if you've ever seen, what is the movie? National... Uh, treasure. Uh, you, you know that uh, the Constitution actually c comes up automatically and is stored every night. 
uh, and it's covered by a large bulletproof glass. Uh, but uh, these two guys wearing cargo short sandals and a backward hat. They say, well, this country is founded on the principle all men are created equally endowed with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that just doesn't mean white, rich white people. Uh, and their job, they say, is to foment rebellion. Well, uh, I think they're going to find out the hard way that they probably chose the wrong way to protest. Uh, the National Archives uh, is very adamant that uh, there are strict federal laws preventing such protests. We'll go ahead and take our half hour break, 97.3 FM, 97.7 FM, 14.50 AM. We'll be right back after the break. From the WAOV News Center, I'm Tom Lee reporting. The Vincent Utilities Services Board heard a continuing update yesterday on the newest Vincent Water Tower. The new structure is coming into place near Vincent Lincoln High School at Hart Street and Richard Bauer Drive. Vincent Water Utilities General Manager Kirk Bushy knows you can see the tank from a good distance, especially south of Vincent's. Bushy also says right now the project on time to be operational by early summer. Good Samaritan Hospital in Vincennes educating, actually dedicating the month of February to educating awareness about heart health and encouraging individuals to prioritize cardiovascular well-being. Good Samaritan offers a free online heart health assessment at its website. That's at gshvin.org slash heart. The results can be printed and shared with a health care provider. And the Vanderburg County Sheriff's Office reporting two Gibson County men facing multiple firearm thefts. The weapons were taken primarily from unlocked vehicles in Vanderburg County. 33-year-old Arsenio Smith of Princeton and 34-year-old Corey Hooker of Fort Branch both charged in those counts. More at WAOVAM.com. I'm Tom Lee. Corn, soybeans, and wheat all continue their sell-off today after losses yesterday. I'm Eric Pfeiffer. This is Hoosier Ag Today's Thursday Closing Farm Market Reports. A lower finish followed projected acreage numbers presented by USDA at their Ag Outlook Forum in D.C. today. Market analyst Arlen Suderman says those numbers from USDA are essentially giving these markets permission to go even lower. How low? I guess we'll find out together. On Thursday, March corn down six and a half, four seventeen and three quarters. May down seven and a half to four twenty nine and three quarters. March beans down eight and a quarter, eleven sixty two and a quarter. Down over a dime on the May contract to eleven sixty six. March wheat was the downside leader, losing eighteen and a half, falling to five sixty seven. In livestock, April live cattle up a dollar sixty, one eighty five sixty, up forty seven on April lean hogs, finishing at eighty five. I'm Eric Pfeiffer, Hoosier Ag Today, Indiana's Farm Network. A second straight SIAC all-conference designation for Ari Gherkin. I'm Tom Lee with the WAOV Radio Sports Beat. She averaged about 15 points a game with a game-high 29 against Linton and went over the 1,000 career point mark for her career in the South Ridge sectional. Other first team members, Avery Kelly of Conference Champ Evansville Memorial, Nora Miller of Wrights, also Maddie Shirley of Central, and Alina Quinn and Jordan Scott of Castle. Second team, Lily Blythe of North, Myla Browning and Sophie Johnson of Memorial. Also Bailey Hope of Wrights, Carly Rogers of Jasper, and Maya Skelton of Evansville Central. And the South Knox School Board has named Brooke Hendricks to be its new varsity volleyball coach. She'll take over for Courtney Wellage, who stepped down late last year. The Lady Spartans 17 and 12 in volleyball a year ago. I'm Tom Lee. Here is another community announcement for you from WAOV. Old Town Players Community Theater will hold auditions for the comedy play Lickety Split, Women and Men in Outrageous Shorts. It'll be February 19th and 20th, starting at 6 at the OTP Theater and Arts Center on Broadway at 5th Street. Auditions are open to men and women 35 or above. Newcomers are welcome and no previous acting experience is required.
Have you ever missed one of your favorite local shows on WAOV? Ever missed the morning chat, Mark and Mark, or even financial questions, real answers? Well, that's not a problem anymore. WAOV has our local shows on podcast and easy to get to them. Go to WAOVAM.com and click on the podcast tab at the top to find your show. It's that easy. So if you miss Vintage Vincent, legal news or views, or just the tips, listen to the podcast the next day. Go to WAOVAM.com and find your podcast. The WAOV forecast now from the Brian Stevens Erie Insurance Weather Center. High of 56 with some gradual clearing today. Mostly clear tonight and cooling off some. Low near 31. Then tomorrow we could see some precipitation and a high expected near 39. Saturday sunny and a high of 32. It's the morning chat with Ed Ballinger. Weekdays at 10 on WAOV. Back. Legal news and views. I'm Jeff. I'm Dave. Time now for that regularly scheduled segment of the program known as Least Competent Criminals. I have only one nominee this week. I got a couple when you run out. All right. We're going to go to Christmas Eve just last year. And in Calgary, Canada, there's a casino. A gentleman named Saeed Amir Razavi. Uh, would decide to go into the cocaine business. So he had a business card made up with the name Alex Lee, and he attached to the business cards free samples of cocaine, stapled them to the cards, and handed them out at the local casino. Um, didn't take the Calgary police long to search his home, where they found almost 60 grams of cocaine, a digital scale, cash, and, oh, yeah, the Alex Lee business cards. He was a driver, too. <laughs> Dothan, Alabama. This guy is behind bars uh, Saturday the 27th of January. They rushed, police rushed to a reports of a robbery and shots fired. When they arrived, they started interviewing people, according to the police. Before the call uh, came in, a woman was approached by the suspect, uh, identified as Mr. Vickers, and asked by Vickers to help with his phone. And then he pulled a gun and demanded her property. Police said Vickers snatched the victim's purse off her shoulder, but the victim pulled her own gun and shot at him, uh, missing him, and he fled. They caught up with him a little bit later and found that he had used a baby uh, BB gun to try to we leave her of her properties. He's lucky he wasn't shot and killed. And one more. Police in Arkansas say a man applying to be a police officer had warrants out for his arrest in Georgia. We may have talked about this. <laughs> uh, Monticello Police, uh, 24-year-old Justin Carter applied for a police officer position through an online application while hiding out in South Carolina. Authorities say the 24-year-old fugitive came to Arkansas to verify details for the physical fitness test. After he arrived, officers say there were discrepancies in his physical appearance from his background check. They investigated Carter's history. They found his real identity and a nation nationwide warrant for his arrest from Georgia. Next day, Carter met police at the high school track to perform his fitness test. They allowed him to perform the fitness test. Good for them. <laughs> took him into custody right after he completed the test. He was wanted on a probation violation in Georgia. So I don't know if that's incompetence, hubris, or a lack of smarts, but if you have a nationwide warrant, you may not want to hang out with the police. So that's what I got. And that wraps up this week's Least Competent Criminals. Thank you. Well, I'm going to go um, to an Airbnb story. If you're not familiar with Airbnb, it's an online service where you can rent homes, some vacation homes, but any homes. Uh, and the story here is uh, a gentleman named Mackey uh, who lived in Mississippi, rented a three-bedroom house in Tennessee from September the 9th last year to September 11th. Uh, he was charged, and I apparently did pay, uh, $567 per night. Uh, it was he and three other individuals, and that's what they told uh, Airbnb. Uh, he did report to the property owner that he was going to have some additional people over for dinner, uh, but it turned out he had a party, 
And that would broke one of the rules, uh, and that incurred uh, another $960 fee, which he did not pay. This made the property owner upset, and so she uh, got the security camera out, and it shows him uh, the additional people coming to the house, one being a woman, uh, being very amorous with one Mr. Mackey, uh, and it was a woman, not his wife. Uh, so the owner of the home <laughs> threatened uh, Mackey, saying, I'm going to send a copy of this to your wife. Well, it was not only a threat, she did actually send it to the wife. Uh, she accidentally uh, did it, uh, but um, I'm not sure, and we may hear more about this, if there's any additional lawsuits. Uh, but uh, the, you got to be careful. That uh, could fall into what is known as extortion. Uh, Julian Assange, still in prison. Uh, this artist, Andrei Molikin, in uh, Russia, he said he does not believe the works by Picasso, Rembrandt, and Andy Warhol, and others, which he will walk away in a safe, will be uh, destroyed. He's collected 16 part, uh, works of art from these famous artists, over $45 million worth. He's locked them in a vault with a corrosive substance, and if he says if he dies in prison, He's going to destroy uh, all of that artwork with some uh, Rube Goldberg type of uh, barrels of acid and so forth. Um, it's a 24. It's a dead man switch, and every 24 hours it has to be reset. Um, and each day after the 24-hour countdown, it's only reset when someone close to Assange confirms his well-being. So he's holding his art he's collected from people hostage to get this guy released because he thinks he shouldn't be in jail. He does make a good point. He says, uh, you know, why is, why is the world not concerned about him uh, being in jail and his life destroyed, but I'm threatened to destroy $45 million worth of excellent art, and there's an outrage. Up in uh, those crazy Russians. Uh, begin a series of Indiana stories here. We'll start with uh, Jasper County, which is up north, small little town of DeMott. Uh, Brian Shields uh, opened a dentistry office there, employed a mother and daughter uh, in the office. Turns out that the mother and daughter, uh, he went out of business because of accounting irregularities. Uh, and he went to the Indiana State Police. The, they interviewed 40 patients, and they found that the mother and daughter would uh, convince the patients to pay cash to get a discount. And then they would take the cash and deposit it uh, to a bank account in the daughter's name. Apparently, they got over $50,000 that way. Um, if you wonder why you're not making money in your business, that might be one thing, one area to investigate. Uh, state police have filed charges against the mother and daughter, uh, s three or four different felonies against each of them. Uh, this gal could probably fit into the least competent criminal category. Uh, <coughs> she parked her Acura uh, double park outside of the police station, and she was inside, slumped over, passed out, right in plain view of the cops. So it looks like a routine DUI by somebody who parked in front of the police station. Uh, a lot of people online who saw the video and the uh, body-worn camera video think that she may have known the policeman. Um, but what's obvious in the uh, video is that Diana, uh, the driver, is trying to flirt with and perhaps even seduce the policeman. <laughs> um, I don't think she was successful. They may have had some kind of a dating relationship, and she may have thought that she could meet him and win him back or some such. But uh, trying to seduce a cop, it happens, I suppose, but probably not in the police station in view of a bunch of witnesses and video. Uh, as I said, a bunch of Indiana stories. Next from Indianapolis. Um, is the story of Tong Kuo Ho, age 36, charged with stealing over $2 million in an international fraud scheme. He and co-conspirators obtained uh, information like names, addresses, dates of birth, phone numbers, social security numbers, and credit cards. 
They would then create fraudulent PayPal and eBay accounts. They would then place expensive items for sale uh, on the accounts, uh, and uh, they would get paid, but they didn't produce the items. Uh, their accounts have been linked to over 500 fraudulent PayPal accounts. Uh, PayPal noticed the activity and uh, notified uh, law enforcement. Uh, he wired $1,200,000 to his family in Vietnam. He also purchased property in Carmel worth more than $300,000. Carmel, Indiana, or Carmel by the Sea? Carmel, Indiana. This is from Indianapolis. That's Carmel by the Interstate, is what they say. We'll take our next break. Legal News and Views, 97.3 and 97.7 FM, 1450 AM. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. About work ethic. That's because we have a lot to balance between being students and being athletes. Engaging in class and in practice. Studying our textbooks and our opponents. Strengthening our minds and our bodies. I'm Jake Tidman from Fort Wayne Snyder High School. And I'm McKenna Cruz from Greenwood High School. As students and as athletes, we work hard to manage our time effectively, to maintain our grades and our eligibility, and to prepare for tests on and off the field. We can't do any of it without putting in the work every single day. High school sports instill a strong work ethic because being a student and being an athlete demands excellence in both. I am IHSAA Commissioner Paul Nottie. Join us by being a champion of high school sports and support our student athletes by buying a ticket to your school's athletic events. This is working hard in the classroom. This is working hard on the playing field. This is your IHSAA. Here at News Talk WAOV, we try to keep you up to date on what's going on around the city of Vincennes. And we continue that effort with live coverage of a Vincennes City Council meetings broadcast in their entirety on the second and fourth Mondays of each month at 6 on News Talk WAOV. So when you want to find out what's going on around the city of Vincennes and the things that affect you, listen every second and fourth Monday starting at 6 for live coverage of Vincennes City Council on WAOV. The WAOV forecast now from the Brian Stevens Erie Insurance Weather Center. High of 56 with some gradual clearing today. Mostly clear tonight and cooling off some. Low near 31. Then tomorrow we could see some precipitation and a high expected near 39. Saturday sunny and a high of 32. It's the morning chat with Ed Ballinger. Weekdays at 10 on WAOV. And we're back. Legal News and Views. I'm Jeff. I'm Dave. Still time for your call, 812-882-3737. Have a follow-up. Last week, I think I talked to, the, to you about the guy in France who built the uh, Eiffel Tower out of matchsticks and the Guinness yes. Book of yeah. World Records said, nope, you used the wrong kind of sticks. Well, no, they, 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 uh, they That's my story. Oh, this is the follow-up. So <laughs> well, apparently, spoiler alert, apparently he cut the match head off of the match sticks of it no busy because it would be a fire hazard well actually he bought these sticks from the match factory without the oh. heads on them oh. because he got tired of snipping them off uh again a spoke of world records said friday that it's changed his mind and considers his attempt valid and within the rules uh, so he now has the record for the tallest match stick sculpture on the guinness website Tallest match stick sculpture is uh, 23 feet 6 inches, achieved by Richard Plaud, France, uh, January 7th, 2024. So apparently, uh, I would imagine social media and the backlash uh, may have caused them to uh, change their minds. Also, uh, although I've never looked at the uh, specifications for obtaining the record, he claims that he followed all of their rules. So. Somebody who judged it said, hey, well, we don't like it because we, we've altered them and there was nothing in the rules that specifically prohibited what he did. So, so his eight years were not for naught. For plod. <laughs> P-L-E-U-D. <laughs> now, first of all, yeah. where do you keep, a, I would assume, fragile structure of that dimension? Do you, do you build it in your basement if you had a tall basement? I don't know that it's that fragile. Uh, I, I watched a show last night on Nova about the building of the Eiffel Tower. And I know he built it out of matchsticks, but 
uh, if you have all the cross bracing in there, it could actually be a quite sturdy structure. 700,000 matchsticks, so he goes out in the backyard for eight years. That's probably a ton of material right there. Hey, honey, I'll be in the backyard building my tower. Okay, good, Flood, carry on. Well, <laughs> the wife was probably happy he had a hobby. Well, I don't want to uh, generalize, but my guess is if you got time to do that, he's unmarried, <laughs> alone, <laughs> all the time. Well, well, another Indiana story, as promised. Uh, Indiana University has issued a cease and desist order to the Tall Epsilon Phi fraternity, which has also been suspended until further notice uh, for hazing. And they're not the only ones, apparently. Kappa Sigma, Sigma Alpha Epsilon, SAE, Kappa Alpha Psi, Alpha Kappa Psi, and Beta Sigma Psi have all received cease and desist orders. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they're suspended, uh, but um, it does put them on notice that if it continues, they will be suspended. Some of those are big fraternities out oh, there on uh, Fraternity Row, Jordan Avenue. Or double secret probation. Yes, yes. Animal House. <laughs> <coughs> Finland-based airline, Finnair, is asking customers for some additional information. Uh, they want them to step on a scale before they get on the plane. Yeah. Airline says collecting the data anonymously from volunteers, so you don't have to do it, <coughs> Those who uh, will do so will not have their weights shown publicly. Only customer service agents can view the number. They want the data from volunteers on the average weight of customers and their carry-on baggage, which, if you know anything about flying, they have to balance everything on the aircraft. <coughs> so that uh, it seems to me that they would have, uh, they could use other statistics to come up with that. Um, so they want the updated uh, data. I was in a flying back from Milwaukee, I think, on a small plane, prop-driven plane. And we're all in there in our little cramped seats. And uh, we called him Big Mo. He came on, and this particular airplane had like a bench seat at the back with like a sofa, three seats. And needless to say, there were two problems. Big Mo couldn't fit. And they had to ask him to move and people to trade places because the tail, yes, the tail yeah. was too, <laughs> yeah. too heavy, so they had to move him forward. Okay. But he was, uh, he was quite cheerful about it, and we all had a good laugh and arrived yeah. safely. Well, the problem with that, if you're in the back, is that you got to get over Big Mo to get out of the plane in a hurry. <laughs> well, there probably was an exit at the back too. Yeah, yeah Big Mo would slow things down. Uh, let's go to Mexico for the next two stories. Uh, nice place this time of the year, warm. Sunny beaches, uh, both uh, on the uh, Gulf. Can you say that on Pacific the air? Side. Sunny beaches. Sunny beaches. I Remember. did. I did say it. I said it too. Uh, but beware, these are tourist uh, areas, and they offer a lot of different sports. One of which uh, is skydiving, uh, advertised as being a wonderful view of the resort area from high above. Uh, but then the, the last thing you will ever see. But then the police. This is the Pacific surfing town of Puerto Escondido. Uh, but the uh, problem was the plane, uh, with four Canadian skydivers on board, uh, didn't quite make it up in the air and landed on the beach, killing a 62-year-old man uh, who was standing right next to his wife. The wife was just perfectly fine, but she's standing there watching a plane take out her husband. I'm sure there'll be some lawsuit over that. This guy got 20 years for a murder, and I don't think that's enough. Texas man has been sentenced for murder of Asia Womack, a 21-year-old woman who he fatally shot after she did what? She beat him at basketball. Ah. <clears throat> the 32-year-old Cameron Jamal Hogg was scheduled to go to trial this week, but entered a last-minute plea deal. He reportedly pleaded guilty to the 2022 <coughs> murder on Tuesday and was sentenced to 20 years in prison two days later. <coughs> of course, the people, uh, her mom is upset, slap in the face because it's pretty much saying that Asia's life was only worth 20 years. He was arrested on October of 2022 after police found Momak with multiple gunshot wounds on a Dallas sidewalk. 
Authorities said the attack went down after Womack beat Hogg in a game of pickup basketball. After a heated exchange, Hogg reportedly left the park, took his children home, and only returned minutes later to confront her as she was uh, walk, uh, walking home. It was at that time that he pulled out a gun, fired four shots uh, before fleeing. Um, I don't know. I'm not a sports, I'm not an athlete, but I don't know why you, uh, the male, fragile male ego would be embarrassed to that extent where you think that person must die. No. The next Mexican story is equally tragic. Um, an American woman, 44-year-old Los Angeles native, Nico Honabakash, um, was on the beach in a Florida, in a, I'm sorry, Mexican resort, uh, when apparently a gun battle broke out between an alleged drug dealer and other gang members. Uh, police speculate at this time she was hit by a stray bullet. Um, be careful out there. Yikes. Polk County, Florida. Uh, this guy was an Uber driver, and he had stolen a rental car, um, and he left the car running for three weeks. And he was make, doing his job as an Uber driver. Uh, was transporting a couple from the UK who were soon to be married when deputies pulled over the vehicle, the Chevy Equinox. Um, seemed like a routine uh, Uber ride. Uh, Mills had initially rented the car from a company in Orlando but stopped making payments. And in the response, the company listed the vehicle as stolen. And to circumvent the company's measure against non-payment, which includes a device preventing the car from restarting, which he apparently knew, he just never turned it off. <laughs> His strategy ended abruptly when authorities caught up with him. He was arrested and charged with grand theft of a motor vehicle and driving with a suspended or revoked license. Um, and uh, he, he also lacked a valid license to operate as an Uber driver. So some people just can't get ahead. They use their initiative, thinks outside the box, or in this case, thinks inside the Equinox. Uh, two and a half years ago, Jackie Guyan of Seattle purchased a couch from Costco. Uh, she said after two and a half years, she just didn't like the color anymore. She checked the Costco return policy and called the store and said, I'm going to return it. She didn't have a receipt, but she did remember the exact date she bought the sofa. The Costco looked it up and said okay and refunded $900 to her credit card. Uh, Costco says that any items returned are donated uh, to charity. Uh, this guy thought he'd figured out a life hack. A motorist removed a barricade and road closure sign from a road shut by a landslide and then he got back in his car and drove directly. Did not pass road, drove directly into a large hole. Um, deputies and emergency crews responded to the car upside down and on fire in the hole. Uh, the occupants had fled the vehicle, so they must have been only slightly injured or fall. They say it's an ongoing problem, people removing the barriers and driving on the closed portions of the road. Uh, and investigation in the crash, reported theft is ongoing. And so if you know anything about somebody who stole a car and drove it into a giant hole, we would like to uh, hear from you. It's uh, west of Portland, if you want to make that call. Uh, Cape Coral, there is a Lowe's um, a couple. 22-year-old Charlie Jorge Perez and 19-year-old Halina Annalise um, went into the Lowe's and, and they were walking out with various items they did not pay for when Lowe's security uh, confronted them. After being confronted, uh, they showed a gun and gave threats. They were arrested the next morning at 1 a.m. where police found four mixed-breed French bulldogs in a bad state of care. And we have music means that uh, this week's show, uh, Legal News and Views, is coming to an end. Thank you for listening. I'm Jeff. I'm Dave. Legal News and Views, 973-977-FM, 1450 AM. We'll be back next week. See you soon.